This is the story of how I built and then rebuilt some storage for the back of my pickup truck. First time around was about two weeks ago. I finally just got frustrated with the fact that it's just so hard to get stuff out of the back of a pickup, like tools and whatnot. So I cut up these uh, conveyor belt tracks that I had in my barn, cut them in half, threw them in the back of the truck on top of my rubber cargo mat, grabbed a piece of plywood that is not full size, like maybe like a five or six foot piece of plywood, um, made a simple tray with some two by fours, put that tray on top of the conveyor belts and I was in action and it was actually kind of a cool setup. Uh, this allowed me to have a slider. It also didn't take up the full bed so I could still store stuff off to the right of the slider. I put a bar behind it so it didn't you know, just totally fall off when I was driving. Put a broom and a rake and I think ultimately I'll put some shovels up above. And I was really in action. I didn't have much time to complete this uh, storage solution. I had jobs to do, I had stuff going on, and in really just a few minutes, like under an hour, I had this uh, totally free to me slider, which allowed me to store a bunch of my tools. You can see I got my miter saw in the front, a bunch of tools in the back, and I was good to go. I used that slider for a week, a week and a half, and I was pretty happy with it. Uh, the cool thing is that it finally allowed me to uh, store more stuff in the truck that was accessible. Just, just as simple as that. You know, you di could, didn't just reach into the truck and grab what was in arm's length. Instead, you could grab, uh, you know, more stuff. And when it was organized, it was working pretty well. But as you can see here, uh, it didn't stay as organized as I hoped it would. It also kind of banged around a little bit. I could have tuned it up, but I decided I wanted something better. I wanted something that utilized the full eight feet of my bed and something with two layers so I could, you know, really dial in the storage a little better. So the conveyor belt was out and I decided to build some drawers. I uh, got some hardboard and some plywood. Pretty simple. I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on this. I think I did spend maybe 150 bucks or something like that. Uh, but in the end, it was really worth it. I cut this plywood to 10 inch strips. Uh, that meant that the height of my lower section, the height of my drawers was gonna be 10 inches. That was determined by my wheel wells. If you're gonna build one of these guys, you gotta build it custom to the back of your truck or van or Jeep or whatever. My wheel wells come up 10 inches, so that's what I did. First thing was to build a kind of carcass. This is the frame that the drawers slide inside of and it's built out of that three quarter inch plywood. I used a little bit of glue and wood screws. Uh, the screws are in there instead of like brad nails or something just because I did think that at some point I might want to take this apart. And unlike a normal carcass, this one had hardboard on the bottom. That's because my uh, truck bed, my liner is rubber and it's really kind of adhesive, like nothing slides on that truck bed liner. And I wanted the drawers to slide. So the drawers had to go on the hardboard and then this is the top of the uh, frame or carcass. And the top is three quarter inch plywood with hardboard on top of it. That way you've got the hardboard, which is really slick and slippery and thin and cheap. It's only like seven bucks a sheet. You get the hardboard on top of the carcass. That way the slider, the big sliding tray, will slide on top of the carcass. Here I'm just putting in some side bracing to keep the slider from banging around and, and falling off to one side. Just kind of keep it dialed in. And with the side bracing in place, this carcass was ready to go in the truck. Uh, this whole job was completed in a day. I couldn't take my truck out of commission for too long and build, you know, like some kind of really elaborate system. So after the uh, carcass was built, I built the drawers. And you know, I built a lot of drawers, but I've never built eight foot long drawers. It was kind of weird. It was almost like building a coffin for a very skinny person or two coffins. Uh, the drawers are also a little unusual. I built them with hardboard on the bottom, fixed at the bottom, not slid in in grooves or anything. That way the drawers have that slick uh, surface all the way along the bottom that they will slide on. Uh, these drawers don't have sliders. I didn't build sliders. Instead, they are just sliding on a system of slick wood on slick wood and felt pads. So I put adhesive felt pads on them. 
I'm not sure how long those felt pads are gonna last, but currently, for this you know first few days I've been using this thing, they slide really nicely. If they come off, the drawers will slide you know uh, hardboard on hardboard pretty well. All right, so uh, with the drawers in place, I got out my CNC router, programmed it, uh, dialed in the new software, and routed out a couple of circles for some drawer pulls. These drawer pulls look kind of cool, but they actually really suck. Uh, they are just so small, you can't get a good purchase on them with your hands. And I mentioned later on uh, that I, I plan to replace these. They look good, but they're just, they're just like total torture devices uh, for pulling big heavy drawers. Anyway, the drawers uh, were all done and I started making sort of compartments, pockets for all the different tools and things. If you don't do that and you hit the brakes, everything's going to slide to the front or if you, you know, pull out, everything's going to slide to the back. Instead of making removable sliders between each compartment, I just screwed in some pieces of uh, uh, plywood and pieces of three quarter inch wood. And if I want to move those, I can just unscrew them and move them around. They're not glued or anything. The next thing to do with those drawers dialed in is to build that top slider. And it's a lot like the one I had before, just bigger. This one is eight feet long and just under four feet wide. So it's almost the size of a full sheet of plywood. And the only thing about it is that it's got a little rail around the outside so stuff doesn't slide off of it. And then on the bottom, and this is the bottom, there's a sheet of hardboard. Uh, same deal, that hardboard stuff, it's really cheap, like seven bucks a sheet, and you can screw it down and it's really slippery. So it allows that uh, whole sheet to slide. The screws, I should mention, that I used to, uh, to connect the hardboard to the plywood are kind of embedded in the hardboard a little bit. You know, you kind of like go over a little bit when your screws are coming down. That way you're not scraping screws on hardboard when you're sliding it. It's just hardboard on hardboard action. Okay, so more felt on this dude just to make it a little bit more slippery. Again, I don't know how long that's going to last, but we'll see. And with the felt in place, the slider went in and actually has really nice action. I put a big old handle on the end of it and it just feels good when you move it. Uh, however, it was tipping, as you would expect, when fully extended. Uh, so the next thing to do was to cut some angle iron. And I just had some one inch angle iron laying around. It actually came from an old bed frame. And I you know, just drilled a couple holes in it, cut it down to length and installed it on the rails that keep the slider from moving side to side. Alright, so now the slider can be extended all the way out and you can sort of let it sit there and it'll stay in place. And at that point, I just filled it up through my table saw in there, portable table saw, a few boxes of gears, a gear, a vacuum, etc. And again, sort of like it did down below, I added some removable separators or dividers that are just like strips of wood screwed in place. Uh, one more thing I did uh, in the interest of organization is I went back to my inverter and I've got a video on this inverter you can check out. I'll put a link here. I went to my inverter, I put a 10 foot extension cord on it, kind of zip tied it to the side of the truck and that will allow me back here, back at the back of the truck, will allow me to charge up batteries and you know make toast or whatever I want to do. Uh, my inverter setup is a little different than some. I've got a shut off under the hood. Uh, so it's kind of like there's a fuse breaker under there and I keep it off so that there's no chance of a fire in the back of the truck. It's, it's seldom on but when I need it I'll flip it on under the hood and then I can charge stuff up back here. I also uh, put a splitter back here so I can charge up multiple kinds of batteries. Man, it would be so nice if power tools that run on batteries all use the same dang batteries but as you know, you know you got a porter cable, you got a DeWalt, you've got different batteries. so. Uh, with this setup, I can charge up two or three different batteries all at the same time in the back of the truck. Okay, so I was going a little organization crazy and I decided to put a tube storage container on the top of the truck. Uh, this is just a four inch PVC pipe 
and it's got a cap affixed on the front end, just sealed up, and then it's got a screw cap on the back. And I attached that to my roof rack. The roof rack, I also have a video on. I love that thing. It's been really sweet to work with. And I've got the tube up there for really important tools. You know, if I ever need to put essential items up there, like a fishing rod, for instance, I can now do that. So I took the truck out on a couple jobs uh, yesterday afternoon and I already know there's a couple things I'm gonna change about the system, but uh, before I do that, let me just give you a walkthrough uh, in case you missed anything. I'm just gonna show you everything I've got going on and in the future, I'll probably do like a full thorough tour, but this is like the quick tour at the end of the video. All right, so I've got my rack up top and I've got a video about that. I built that uh, a while back and I've got my storage tube and uh, just a hand truck I use a hand truck all the time for carrying like big loads of equipment and gear and stuff a long way if I've got a job that's like far from the truck. And then a couple ladders, a long extension ladder and a shorter ladder. And then inside the truck you've got really kind of like three or four storage areas. One is along the side where I've got my cords and my inverter and my wire set up. The other is up top where I've just got a rake and a broom. Um, I'll probably end up putting a couple shovels up there. And then in the back, as you saw, I've got the uh, portable table saw, my shop vac, and just uh, some drywall stuff. There's a lot of room here for a uh, miter saw, or sometimes called a drop saw by some people. A miter saw, and I can also run my miter stand along the side here, uh, my folding miter stand. And then uh, the two things I think I'm gonna end up changing with this system have to do with the drawers. One is that those uh, handles are just too small for big heavy drawers, they just kill your fingers. So I ordered some bigger ones uh, and those are gonna be a lot better. The other thing is that these slides, they work, but you know, 10, 20 times a day, every day of the week, uh, they're heavy and hard to pull. So I might end up rebuilding the drawers, shrinking them down so that they can fit actual sliders with rollers. Uh, there are some other builds online where people do that and I, you know, at first I thought that was kind of weak and I didn't need it, but it's already bugging me that the drawers are hard to pull. So like I said, the organization of this drawer has to do uh, with a couple things, uh, type of tools and then also priority. Stuff I use the most is up front and stuff I use the least is toward the back. I also try to get some weight balance and whatnot, so there were a few considerations. Uh, here I've just got my, uh, mainly my drill stuff and my batteries underneath, um, some pencils and measuring tools just because they're close to the front. This is my go bag where I carry just whatever I'm using on the job. Um, that's portable and then these are my tool rolls. I've got three of those and some other tools that sometimes go in the tool rolls. This is mainly safety stuff, respirator, um, hearing, knees, hands, whatnot, uh, a couple tool belts and whatnot. Uh, we've got a circular saw here, got my socket set and then a few miscellaneous tools, a sandal, a dremel, stuff like that. And then this side has more to do with fasteners. These are my uh, most used fasteners, mainly wood screws and deck screws, uh, things of that kind, some nails. And then specialty fasteners, you know, just a collection of every other kind of thing you can imagine uh, that I use sporadically, but they come in handy. Um, fasteners here, a few more on the side here. I've got a couple levels here, a long one and a short one. Uh, this is kind of like a cleaning and miscellaneous upkeep bag. I've got some cough cleaning supplies, a light, a couple drop cloths, trash bags, and a toolbox in the back. And then one other thing I should mention is that I have seen some guys put like locks on these things and uh, you know secure them with clasps and latches just to keep this stuff from sliding, but it's just not going anywhere. This could slide as you see a couple inches and the drawers could slide like a quarter inch but I don't think they're going to. Uh, yesterday, uh, when I showed up at the first job, I checked, I was like, maybe those drawers moved a little bit, but they were exactly where they were originally. That's just because they're so dang heavy and there's enough friction in my sliders, sliding mechanism, whatever you want to call it, 
Uh, there's enough friction to keep them from moving. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna say, I promise, is that even though I've got just a ton of stuff in the truck and it's loaded down, uh, don't think for a second that I've got all my tools in that pickup truck, no way. Uh, my whole welding kit over here, that's not in the truck. Um, uh, drill press, electrical uh, supplies, all my plumbing stuff, painting stuff. There's just too much to fit in a pickup truck. There's just no way it's gonna happen, but uh, this does make it a lot, a lot better. All right, thanks for checking out the build, and I'll see you in the next project.